Hi, Jeff Georgianis here to talk about jewelry tools for my buddies at Auto Fry. Today's topic, all about fancy shaped bezel blocks. This video is a follow-up video to the first video that I did about how to use round bezel blocks. If you're new to using bezel blocks, you should check that video out first because a lot of the guidelines in that video will cross over to this one. Auto Fry stocks a huge selection and variety of different shaped bezel blocks. With fancy shaped blocks, you might have to deal with corners, curves, and different angles. Each shape could potentially have different instructions of how to use them. With that in mind, I'm going to focus on the three most popular fancy shaped blocks, oval, pear, and emerald. I picked those shapes as they have elements that will help you do most any shape. Let's get started with the oval bezel block. Here's a couple of methods to make a tapered oval bezel. Number one, using thick wall tubing to make an oval tapered bezel. Choose a piece of heavy wall round tubing where the inner diameter is kind of close to the diameter of the oval stone. Remember that it just has to be sort of close. The bezel block will make it be the perfect size. Measure your stone from the table to the culet and add one and a half to two millimeters. And cut your tubing to that distance. File the ends to where they're square. Bend the tubing to an approximate oval shape. Determine what the finished size hole on your bezel block is to be. Remember, the right size hole is one that accommodates the circumference of your stone and the thickness of your bezel material. Start compressing your tubing into progressively smaller bezel block holes until you get to your desired hole size. I prefer to use a hydraulic press to do the compressing, but you can also use the rounded side of a planishing hammer. Anneal if necessary. Analyze the shape with the oval bezel punch. Now let's show an easy method to use sheet metal to make an oval tapered bezel. Just like before, measure the stone from the table to the culet and add one and a half to two millimeters. Cut a length of sheet metal that is the height that you just measured. 22 gauge is the minimum thickness that's recommended for this technique. Roughly shape the sheet metal to the circumference of the oval stone, kind of the same way that you'd form a bezel for a capuchon. Cut, file, solder with hard solder, then pickle and rinse. The rest of the steps are the same as what we just did with the tubing method. Pick a hole in the oval block that accommodates the circumference of the stone and the sheet metal thickness. Compress the bezel into sequentially smaller holes with either the hydraulic press or a rounded planishing hammer. Use the bezel punch to finalize the oval tapered shape. And the bezel is finished! Now let's move on to the pear shaped block. Again, this method is going to be very similar to what we've just done. Measure the stone from the table to the culet. Add one and a half to two millimeters. Cut a piece of sheet metal that's the height that you just measured. Bend the metal to where it's roughly the shape of the stone. In this case though, it's really important that the joint meets at the point of the pair. File the two ends to where they meet precisely. Solder with hard solder, pickle, then rinse with water. Compress your bezel into sequentially smaller holes until you get to the right size using either the rounded side of a planishing hammer or the hydraulic press. Finalize the form by hammering with the bezel punch. And the bezel is finished! Now let's make an emerald shaped tapered bezel. I chose the emerald shaped bezel block to demonstrate because the complexity of its form offers a number of challenges to resolve. It's not just a rectangle. The beveled corners turn the shape into a tapered rectangular octagon. Follow all of the same steps that we've talked about so far. Cut a piece of sheet metal that's 1.5 to two millimeters taller than the stone and bend it roughly to fit. In this case, you want to make sure that the joint is in the long part of the rectangle. Solder with hard solder, pickle, and rinse with water. Compress the rectangle into sequentially smaller holes until you get to the right size. 
The emerald shape can be problematic in that the bezel has to compress in a number of different directions at once. This might cause the metal to crinkle, but the block and the punch will force the bezel back into the right shape with annealing and hammering. To finalize the emerald shape, you'll need to hit the bezel with the punch pretty hard. You'll also may need to anneal the metal once or twice. Notice that when I'm hammering, I'm kind of leaning the punch into the corners a little bit. That's to help define the edges. The top and the bottom of the bezel may need to be filed a little bit to perfect the shape. Okay, now let's talk about the Metal Arts Cone Teplet Layout Jig and how you can use it to help make fancy shape tapered bezels. Before we begin though, check out the first bezel block video on round stones for complete instructions on how to use the Metal Arts Cone Template Jig. That jig is designed to create round cones, but with a little trial and error, you can make the right size round cone that you can bend and use in different bezel block shapes. I'd recommend using an inexpensive metal like copper that's the same gauge as your finished metal to experiment with to get the right size cone. Here's some general guidelines on how to use the Metal Arts Cone Template Jig with our three shapes of oval, pear, and emerald bezel blocks. Line up the stone lengthwise in the back of the jig. Like I said, you'll have to do some experiments to get the right dimensions. Remember that each line is one millimeter. To start, I'd recommend going one line above and one line below for your first experimental cone. Put some clear tape on the jig and use a permanent marker to follow the lines to create your arc on the tape. Place the tape on your sheet metal and cut out the arc with a jeweler saw. Use pliers to shape the cone so the two ends meet. Remember, depending on your stone shape, you might have to file a bevel where the ends meet so they line up perfectly. For now, with the oval and emerald shapes, bring the two ends together to make a round cone. For the pear bezel, file a bevel on each end and roughly make it into a pear shape now. Make sure the two ends join perfectly at the point. Like we've seen before, solder your cone with hard solder, pickle, and rinse with water. You can use pliers to shape the cone to make it either be an oval or a rectangle. Do the compressing and shaping with the bezel punch like we've done with the other bezels so far. Now we're going to talk about how to use a bezel block to make wax bezels for lost wax casting. I showed this tip in the round bezel block video. It's especially helpful though with fancy shaped tapered bezels, which can be really challenging to carve. This technique you use the bezel block punch, not the bezel block, and you can use any shape bezel block punch. Coat the punch with a light layer of oil, dip the punch into hot injection wax, let the wax cool and harden and then remove it from the punch. From there, you can trim it down to the right size and incorporate it into your lost wax casting design. Don't forget that you can also grind, file, saw, and drill your fancy shaped tapered bezels to create custom prong settings. This is probably the easiest way to make a custom fancy shaped prong settings. One of the things that I regularly tell my students is that when you're learning a new technique, it's helpful to have the mindset of an inventor. Experimentation and persistence leads to success. Another thing is that there's often 15 totally different answers to the same question, and all the answers are correct. Both of those statements very much relate to learning about bezel blocks. Bezel blocks are incredibly useful tools that can be used in many different ways. I highly recommend that you get a block or two, experiment, and figure out for yourself how to make them work for you. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on fancy shaped bezel blocks. If you like this video, please hit the like button below and don't forget to subscribe as well so you don't miss any of the upcoming AutoFry tech tip videos coming your way soon. Thank you so much for watching. Keep learning, keep experimenting, and keep trying new things.